Before I start this video, I want to say thank you to all of you who give me courage about the last video that I did uh, about quantum numbers. If you haven't checked that video, definitely check that out because it has a lot of emotions and of course a lot of important information into it. Let's start with uh, the topic that we have today. In this video, we are going to learn how to write electronic configurations. We are going to start first with the principles and after that we are going to continue with examples and also with exceptions and a little bit about paramagnetism and demagnetism. Diamagnetism. The first principle is Aubau principle, which came from a German verb Aubauen, which means to build up. In other words, adding the necessary number of electrons into orbitals in a way that gives the lowest total energy for an atom. The second principle is Powell exclusion principle, which said that two electrons cannot have four identical quantum numbers. The third principle is Hund's rule, which said that electrons occupy all orbitals in a given subshell before the pairing begins. The unpaired electrons have parallel spins, so they are in the same direction. Before I move to an example in electronic configuration, it's important to know some basics about the quantum numbers. I'm going to give here briefly, but I will link a video in the, this video description that is completely about the quantum numbers. So, n equal to 1 contains s orbitals. That These are what we need for writing the electronic configuration. n equal to 2 contains s orbitals and p orbitals. n equal to 3 contains s, p and d orbitals and n equal to 4 contain s, p, d and f orbitals. In terms of electron, s contain maximum 2 electrons, p 6 electrons, d 10 electrons and uh, f 14 electrons. So we are going to use this scheme in order to write the electronic configurations. This scheme is generated by using the AUBA principle, which said that uh, we are going to assign electrons in n plus l increasing value and if n plus l is the same we are going to fill first first the shell that has the uh, low the smallest n okay we are going to start with sulfur which has an atomic number equal to 16 which means it has in its ground state 16 electrons so first is going to fill 1s 1s 2 what this means before I go filling the, all the electronic configuration? This one here represents the n, the principal quantum number. S is the L, angular momentum quantum number, and 2 is the number of electrons in a given subshell. It's going to be 1s2, 2s2, come to s, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4, a total of 16 electrons. So this is the electronic configuration for sulfur. It can be written also with boxes. As I'm filling with electrons, I am respecting the hand rule which said that we are going to fill singly the orbitals and after that pairing begins. Like in this case we have 4 electrons in the p orbitals, so 3 we place 3 singly and after that we pair the 4th one. Okay, uh, let's move now a little bit to the periodic table, which is called the chemist's best friend. It is really indeed, it's a really helpful tool. Periodic table tells us a lot of important information about electronic configurations. Group 1 and group 2 are S orbital block. If we move to the transition metals, which are these ones here, these are D blocks. And uh, non metals on this side are P orbital blocks. And we have also lanthanides and actinides that are F orbital blocks. Okay. So S block, D block, and P block. 
And of course, you know that are the periods or in terms of quantic number is the number of the shell. And uh, from and these ones are the groups. We have group A and group B. The difference between group A and group B is that it's not part of this video, but it is related with the fact that A groups obey strictly the law of periodicity in terms of property of elements. But B groups, they do not, they have a lot of inner they have a lot of exceptions in trends about uh, related to the periodic law. So, if we take, for example, sulfur electronic configuration, so, if we see at the periodic table, sulfur is at group 6A, okay? But can we find this by using only the electronic configuration? The answer is yes. First, you can define the period. The biggest number of the shell defines the period, which is 3 in this case. So, sulfur is in group, is in period 3. But which group it belongs? You have to count the numbers of the outermost shell. So, it's going to be 4 plus 2, 6. But 6, yes, but 6a or 6b, it contains only s and p orbitals on its outermost shell. So 2 plus, uh, so in the outermost shell it contains 2 and 4, so it means it's 6, it contains s and p, which means it's going to be group 6a, and indeed it's that. So from the electronic configuration, you can find the position of an element in its periodic in the periodic table. Keep this in mind. Uh, another help that we take from uh, periodic table is that we can write shortly the electronic configurations. For example, we are going to use noble gases that are here. This one's here, neon, argon, krypton, and we are going to square bracket. For example, in this case, neon. Uh, in order to express sulfur, uh, neon says that is has it has its outermost shell fully completed. So which means that we are gonna start now what remains, uh, which means that is gonna be the third shell. So what remains is three s two, three p four. So in order to write in this form sulfur configuration, or any other element, you are gonna use the noble gas that is one period above. For example, if it was like arsenic, you were you were going to use argon as a noble gas to, to write it shortly. Okay, let's move now to the second example, which is manganese, which has an atomic number, 25. How we are gonna write? We are gonna refer this scheme 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, but 3 has also 3d, but 3d, according to the scheme, fills after the 4s, so first we are going to have 4s2, and after that comes the 3d with the remaining electrons, 3d5. Writing longer is going to be This is the electronic configuration for manganese. Keep in mind that the 4s fields before the 3d, according to the scheme and also predicted by Aufbau principle. Okay, this is another scheme that tells the energy energies of the orbitals. We see from here, for example, why 4s fields before 3d, because 3D is in slightly higher energy level than 4S, predicted by Aufbau principle. Let's move now to the exceptions. We are going to classify in two groups. The first one, half-filled set of equivalent orbitals, and the second one is filled set of 
equivalent orbitals. So as an example for the first one, we are going to take with for the half field set of uh, equivalent orbitals. We are going to take we are going to take chromium, which has a z equal to twenty four. In writing the electronic configuration according to Aufbau principle, it's going to be one s two, two s two, two p six. Here, according to Aufbau, it's going to be four s two and three d four. But experimentally is proved that it's not like this. It's 4s1, 3d5. This happened to all elements along this group. So the second example with filled set of equivalent orbitals is copper, which has an atomic number 29, and the electronic configuration is gonna be instead of 4s2, 3d9 is going to take 4s1, 3d, 10. But why are these kind of exceptions? The reason behind this, why are these exceptions, is because Albao principle takes into account calculation about the hydrogen atom, which has only one electron in its shell. But by increasing the number of charge of the nucleus, some property of the solution change slightly. That's why we have this kind of changes. But the time that Alba principle was uh, formulated, the spectroscopic method was weak on that. The last thing that I need to point out is about paramagnetism and demagnetism. Substances that has unpaired electrons are weakly attracted by the magnetic field. Substances that has all electrons paired are considered to be diamagnetic. Please do not confuse ferromagnetism with these two properties because ferromagnetism is tens or thousand times more powerful than paramagnetism and diamagnetism. Okay? We are gonna take two small examples to understand to fully understand this concept. So we are gonna use nitrogen and neon. Electronic configuration for nitrogen is gonna be 1s. As you can see, nitrogen has unpaired electrons. That's why it's called paramagnetic. Neon, on the other side, has this kind of electronic configuration. So as you can see, all electrons are filled. That's why it's called diamagnetic. Oh, okay, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And if you like this video, give a thumbs up. If you don't like it, it's okay, give a thumbs down. And see you in the next video. Peace.